What's up with it, y'all? It's EJ O E Business. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy my reaction. So, what we are getting into right now is into a, another series segment. It's another segment of the popular Tucker Carlson Fox News. This takes place in August of 2018. This is the second one I did on him. All right, so it's Americans, really, no. Well, who wants to say Americans, whatever, Fox News, you know, talking about, you know, land being taken. And here, check this out. The whole title of it is, where is it? South Africa begins seizing land from white farmers. You ain't got to say white, right? But you know, you said white because of racism, because they feel that, how Fox News, they go about things as if uh, they feel that uh, black people aren't racist, so we have to put it in their face. That's how he acts. Like, why do you have to point out white? Like, for real, why? Just say farmers. Like, what are you trying to prove? All right, and here, I'm going to tell you something else, you guys. It's hard to find a lot of stuff on South Africa on YouTube. That's why it takes me a minute to find things. But I, I find things on negative shit that goes on. And then I find things that I hate it, but it's like, they talk about like white farmers. Like I've seen a couple of them, like just the white, like just about how white people are treated, like, like straight up. Like on YouTube, like out here, I can probably find like five videos, pow, like that, where it's just like, you need to feel bad for the white man. Like that's what the country, that's what it seems like, you know, unless they just know you two would all like, oh, yeah, let's put this on about South South Africa. It's going to make people just pay attention and want to see it. Yes, I'm one of them. You know, obviously, I'm curious. But for me to tell you guys that I don't find so much positive stuff out here on YouTube about South Africa, like it's hard. That's a problem, right? Anyways, let's watch this. All right. Tucker Carlson. You guys' favorite news anchor who I introduced you guys to, who you guys do not like. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let me make sure it's at the beginning. Tucker Carlson, Fox News. I don't like his ass. I'll tell you that for sure. That's why I play him. I play him because I just want to see how you guys feel about his dumb ass, how popular he is. Okay, he just going because I was driving. All right. And, you know, just like I said, playing, because, you know, I was talking about. I... We've got an exclusive investigation for you tonight. The president of South Africa, Cyril Ramaphosa, has begun, and you may have seen this in the press, seizing land from his own citizens without compensation because they are the wrong skin color. That is literally the definition of racism. Racism is what our elites say they dislike most. Donald Trump is a racist, they say, but they paid no attention to this at all. In fact, Ramaphosa is one of Barack Obama's favorite leaders in the world. In a speech just a few weeks ago, Obama praised him. He praised the racist government of South Africa and <laughs> Ramaphosa by name for, quote, inspiring hope throughout. <laughs> praised the racist governor? <laughs> oh, my God. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Oops. The country. Does our current bureaucratic elite agree with that? Apparently, they do. We called over to the State Department for comment on South Africa's land seizures, seizures which should be getting worldwide attention because they are immoral but are getting basically none. And the State Department replied with what is honestly an unbelievable statement. We're going to quote it for you at length. Here it is. Quote, we are aware of these reports and have been following this issue very closely for some time. South Africa is a strong democracy with resilient institutions, including a free press and an independent judiciary. South Africans are grappling with the difficult issue of land reform through an open process, including public hearings, broad-based consultations, and active civil society engagement. President Ramaphosa has pledged that the land reform process will follow the rule of law and its implementation will not adversely affect economic growth, agricultural production, or food security. End quote. State Department did not mention that by following the rule of law, he has changed the country's constitution to make it possible to steal land from people because they are the wrong skin color. 
In other words, nothing to see here, says Mike Pompeo's State Department. It's totally okay for South Africa to steal property for racist reasons because they are, quote, a strong democracy and held, quote, public hearings. Criminals take note, find a buddy, start robbing State Department employees on their way to work. By their logic, as long as you outnumber them, they'll be okay with getting robbed because it's democracy. Marion Tupi is from South Africa. He spent a lot of time studying that country and the region. He now works at the Center for Global Liberty and Prosperity at the Cato Institute. We talked to him about this recently. Here's our conversation. I thought the whole point of the new South Africa and the reason the rest of us were excited to see it uh, in 1994 take shape is because it rejected racial discrimination. And yet that, the government is now embracing it. Or am I missing something? No. Um... You guys, tell me how you feel about him. I'm smiling. I was laughing because... This is what I, this is why I said it's Comedy Central, because just what they say, how they say it, and it just makes it like not believable, non-believable, you know, shit like this makes a lot of people, a lot of white people, um, look at Africa as racist, shit like this makes a lot of people from America not really know about Africa and not wanting to go out there because of things like this the truth. All right, here we go. In a free and civilized society, we don't take people's stuff on the basis of the color of their skin. It was wrong when it took place under apartheid. It is wrong now. And it would be a tragedy if South Africa were to repeat the same mistakes it did in the past. So there are really two levels here. First is the moral level, and you and I are in agreement that it's always wrong to punish people for what they look like. Um, but second is the effect that it will have. We saw something similar to this happen. I agree what he said, you know, about um, just being racist right there, you know, treating people different because the color of their skin. That's bullshit. I hate racist people. Why are you racist? Just think about it. Why? Like, why would you dislike? I'm black, okay? So, sorry. Of course, I'm going to have to talk more about my skin tone. But um, because of stuff that happened in the past, you know, with a lot of racist things. How do you dislike somebody because of their skin color? Think about it. How do you, like, how would you dislike somebody because of their skin tone? Were you chose, did you choose to be born like this? Like, it just makes no sense. Like, oh, yeah, I don't like you because of your skin color. What? It ain't my fault. Like, you know, so probably people were thinking and all that, you know? I'm happy to be black, though, man. We back. We, we, we back. Enjoy Tucker on the left. In neighboring Zimbabwe, what happened when land was seized there on the basis of skin color? Eighteen years ago, the governing party of Zimbabwe, ZANU-PF, was threatened with electoral loss. And in order to shore up its support amongst the uh, electorate, it decided to expropriate the farmers of Zimbabwe. Uh, what that led to, aside from horrific uh, violence, was a total economic collapse of the country. Half a century of economic growth was wiped out in Zimbabwe as a result of this particular policy. Uh, the country experienced hyperinflation and had to abandon its currency. Uh, the country's unemployment rate was roughly 90 percent. Life expectancy uh, plummeted, uh, child mortality increased, and, uh, uh, of course, uh, the agricultural production uh, has collapsed and uh, hunger ensued. So the Western media, particularly the media of the United States, has resolutely ignored this. This didn't just happen today. This has been unfolding over a period of years. The Trump administration has not weighed in on this. What, how should the U.S. administration respond to this human rights tragedy that we're watching unfold? Well, the first thing that needs to be made clear is to, is to denounce the policy. Uh, the administration needs to make it very clear that it is both immoral, because it talks how do you guys feel about the American government? Because, yes, our government is very, very powerful. And how we get involved with everybody, basically. How do you guys feel about with the American government? And how do you guys feel about American government?
All right, here we go. What do you got? Targets a specific group of people, and I thought we were beyond that. And secondly, that it could be economically destructive. So we need to make it very clear where we stand. Secondly, uh, South African government needs to be aware that the law, the uh, African Growth and Opportunity Act, under which South Africa trades with the United States, requires the President of the United States to expel countries from AGOA that do not respect property rights and due process. So South African government needs to be aware that if it changes the constitution and legalizes what is essentially theft of private property, it will be kicked out of AGOA and uh, further negative economic consequences will ensue. Why would President, former President Barack Obama, just a, several weeks ago, publicly praise a racist like Cyril Ramaphosa? Why would he do that? A lot of people hope that uh, Cyril Ramaphosa is playing some sort of a three-dimensional chess, that he's just trying to appease the far left of his political party and the far left in the country. But ultimately, he doesn't really believe in what he explicitly says he believes. Cyril Ramaphosa has said that uh, by expropriating the farmland, the privately owned farmland in South Africa, he's going to create the Garden of Eden in South Africa. He's going to turn South Africa into hell, just like Zimbabwe is a complete catastrophe. And so Barack Obama should pick up the phone, call Cyril Ramaphosa, and tell him that if he wants to continue to enjoy the good press he's been having, he needs to reverse policy that he is set on and uh, uh, behave in accordance with normal uh, rules uh, that define and characterize free countries. Yeah, I wish he'd said that in public when he had the chance, but of course he didn't, being a coward. Marion, thank you very much for your deep knowledge on this subject. I appreciate My it. My pleasure. Sam, how'd he call the president a coward back then? Just like they'll get mad if it happened now. Guess what? You guys tell me everything he just said about how you guys feel. All right, I wanna know everything. All right, thank you for coming, y'all. We about to hear you. I know what it is.